let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Now, an advantage of being a full-time student and living on campus at Moravian was that I could participate in learning opportunities such as lectures and seminars made available at the college, the seminary, or other organizations within the community that I would miss out on when I had been working full-time for the borough. But one of those opportunities was an all-day program on developing inclusive worship services. It was held at Congregation Knesset Israel in Allentown and was sponsored by two organizations that I had become involved with after we moved to Bethlehem. Now my classmate Mandy and I, there's Mandy, I don't know what the joke was that we were laughing at, but this picture was taken after her ordination back in August. So Mandy and I decided this was an event we wanted to attend. We only had one problem. Mandy and I had one class together that se semester and happened to meet in the morning on the day of this seminar. So we spoke with the professor and explained why we wanted to miss class and we received that professor's blessing to attend the seminar. Now, to an extent, I had been using what I learned during that seminar here at Salem, doing my best to avoid referring to God with male pronouns is one way of making worship more inclusive. But this seminar went far beyond which pronouns to use when referring to God. In this seminar, we talked about naming ceremonies when an individual transitioned from the sex they were assigned at birth to the gender they perceived themselves to be. We talked about wedding ceremonies for two brides or two grooms, something Debbie and I still chuckle about when we hear in our heads the voice of the priest that officiated at Nate and Pete's wedding, constantly referring to the bridal party. The seminar was broken down into a series of workshops where different topics were addressed. What was interesting was that just about every presenter began their presentation by sharing their story. It may have been their coming out story. It may have been the story about what led them in their ministry to develop and offer inclusive <coughs> worship services and the outcomes of those services. And as well as presenting their stories, since some of our groups were small enough, some of the presenters asked us to share a bit of our story with the group. I have to tell you, hearing some of those stories was difficult. It is hard listening to someone tell you they were rejected by their family when they chose to live openly as God made them to live. It was hard to hear stories about someone being rejected by their congregation because they, they had been part of since birth because God made them differently from the majority. It was hard hearing of their struggle to find a new, welcoming congregation. At the end of the day, Mandy and I got in a car to drive back to Bethlehem. And as we left, Mandy said to me, you know, it is our stories that will lead the change. And that comment struck me. And I started to pay attention to the impact of people's stories on me and how many different times I was asked to share my story and how I still continue to share parts of my story today. Now, our class at the seminary selected Mandy as our graduation speaker. And I must tell you, we made an excellent choice. In Mandy's remarks, she continued on the theme of stories. She reminded us that we learned a great deal from our professors and from the reading and the research, and I guess even the writing. But we also learned from each other through our stories. She reminded us that it was not only life lessons we taught each other through our stories, but it was also lessons of the glory of God that we learned when we shared our stories. So three weeks ago, we looked at Psalm 25, and we said Psalm 25 was an individual lament. It was a psalm where the psalmist poured out their heart to God, a psalm that reveals that God wants each of us in our prayers to be honest. If we're angry with God, say so. If we're angry with our neighbor, say so. If we are honest with God, God can lead us and teach us. 
Last week we looked at Psalm 19. And in Psalm 19, the psalmist reminds us that the commandment of God is clear. And there is great reward in keeping that commandment. But it is not easy. The psalmist asks God for forgiveness and help to avoid straying from the commandment. And concludes by offering the prayer I offer when I begin the message. Now today we're going to focus on two segments of Psalm 107. Now scholars tell us that the Psalms, what we regard as one book in the Bible, is actually five separate books. The first three books, Psalms 1 to 90, or 1 to 89, I'm sorry, are dominated by Psalms of Lament. While in the last two books, Psalm 90 to Psalm 150, the tone shifts. And now we're hearing psalms where praise and thanksgiving are offered to God. And Psalm 107, our psalm for this morning, is the first psalm in what scholars believe is in the last book of psalms of the five books. So the psalmist tells us to give thanks to the Lord. And again, the psalmist is using Yahweh here. He's referring to the God, the psalmist was referring to the God that appeared to Moses and revealed himself to Moses. And the psalmist says, give thanks to the Lord for the Lord is good. And the Hebrew word for good is tob, T-O-B, which is the same word used in Genesis to describe God's creation. So the psalmist is telling us that God is good just as God's creation is good. Then the psalmist reminds us that God's steadfast love endures forever. The Hebrew word is hesed, meaning devotion, faithfulness, loving kindness, or steadfast love. The psalmist is telling us that it is God's nature to love. It is God's nature to love. And God will reveal that love and express that love in acts of kindness. And then the psalmist says that those who the Lord has delivered should proclaim that steadfast love endures forever. Those who have been gathered from the lands of the east and the west and the north and the south should stand up and say that God's steadfast love endures forever. And then we jump. We jump all the way from verse 3 to verse 17. And we hear about those who were sick because of their sinful ways. They cried out to God, and God delivered them. And the psalmist says, should give thanks to the Lord and tell of God's deeds. So in Psalms 19 and 25, there are psalms where the author was communicating directly with God, and we were given the opportunity to listen. Psalm 107, on the other hand, is not addressed to God. Psalm 107 involves a community. The author is speaking to people like us, gathered for worship. The author is speaking to a gathering of people from all walks of life who came, the psalm tells us, from the east and the west and the north and the south. Now, on the day this was written, this may have been people coming to the temple in Jerusalem returning after years and years in exile. So this had significant meaning to them that they had the opportunity to be in the temple worshiping. Last summer, it may have been those of us who came from all over the United States and beyond to Baltimore for the General Synod. Now, if we had read verses 4 to 16 and continued past verse 22, we would have heard three more stories of people who had taken a wrong turn. We would have heard three more stories of people who cried out to God, and God heard their cry and delivered them. This psalm is walking us and those gathered through these difficult experiences that the people had. Four stories in all one from the east, one from the west, one from the north, and one from the south. And I think I had my east and west backwards. In each case, because of God's steadfast love, the people were delivered from their situation. 
So each of these stories includes a call to give thanks to God. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wonderful works to humankind. And the story we heard this morning that Susan read to us ends with, let them offer thanksgiving sacrifices and tell of his deeds with songs of joy. It is the stories that are the reasons for the people to give thanks. It is the stories that fuel their passion to give thanks. This text is about God. It's not about the worshipers. The worshipers are gathered to share stories to honor God. The God who is good, the God who shows steadfast love, the God who hears the cry for help and is the rescuer of the people, the God whose hesed endures forever. What about us? Have we ever been wanderers lost in the desert? Have we ever been prisoners longing to be set free? Have we ever been sick in our sinful ways? Have we ever been caught in a storm at sea, or maybe on Interstate 80, for that matter? When we found ourselves in one of those situations, have we cried out to the Lord in our trouble? And have we experienced God rescuing us from our distress? Psalm 107 is our guide for what to do in these situations. Psalm 107 tells us to recognize the situation we're in, cry out to God, tell God what we need, and accept the deliverance that God brings, and give thanks to God. The last verse of our reading this morning tells us how we are to give thanks to God. The last verse of our reading says, Let them offer thanksgiving sacrifices and tell of God's deeds with songs of joy. Now, I don't know about you, but when I read of sacrifices in the Bible, and i got to move away from that heat. <laughs> Whew, it's getting hot back here. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> when I read about sacrifices in the Bible, I think of people bringing an animal to the temple and the priest offering the sacrifice on the altar. A sacrifice made to restore the broken relationship between God and that person. That's not what the psalmist is referring to here. The psalmist is speaking of a thanksgiving sacrifice. And when a thanksgiving sacrifice was offered, the priests and the worshipers would share a community meal to celebrate and give thanks for God's goodness. We offer a Thanksgiving sacrifice when we gather around the table the first Sunday of the month and celebrate communion. We are giving thanks for the example Jesus set for us in the upper room by following the instructions Jesus gave us. But I wonder if there are other times. I wonder if it's a Thanksgiving sacrifice when we gather in the social hall for a time of fellowship after worship. Will we consider that a communal meal of gratitude? where we're celebrating good, God's goodness? What about the, thanks, the Thursday gatherings at Dominic's or the monthly breakfast at the Jube or the Mountaintop Lodge? Are they communal meals of gratitude where we celebrate God's goodness? During our planning meetings, one of the things on the list that we developed and displayed on the wall in the social hall was potlucks. If we were to hold an occasional potluck dinner, would that be a communal meal of gratitude where we celebrated God's goodness? How do we celebrate God's goodness? Is it just by breaking bread together? Or is there more to it? The psalmist answers that question for us. The psalmist is telling us that breaking bread together is part of it. But there's more to it than that. There's more to it than just sharing a meal. The psalmist tells us that we have to offer the thanksgiving sacrifices and also tell of God's deeds with songs of joy. Share the story. We can read all the theology books in the world, and I've only barely scratched the surface. 
They will teach us all about God. We can read the Bible and hundreds of commentaries and learn about God. But if we want to know how God is working in the world around us today, I need to hear your stories and you need to hear my story. And it goes beyond those of us sitting in this sanctuary. If we want the people not in these pews to know how God is working in the world today, then they need to hear our stories. They need to hear about the struggles we first faced and how God revealed God's self in those struggles. They need to know that it is God's nature to love and that God expresses that love in acts of kindness. They need to know that God's steadfast love endures forever. So the question is, are we willing to show our neighbors the glory of God by sharing our stories? Amen.